CataractCoach.com, pseudophagodenesis, and UGH syndrome. So how do you address the uveitis, the glaucoma, and the microhyphema? Now, this patient had prior cataract surgery. But look in there, you can see this patient also has pseudoxfoliation, some fibrosis of the lens capsule, the anterior rim there. You also see some of the pseudex material on the pupil margin. Now, our guest surgery here is going to lasso and loop around the haptics of that existing lens. It's a single-piece acrylic lens in the bag. And so you can see that needle was placed here through the sclera, about three millimeters back, and now coming across the eye and threading in a proline suture. Probably looks to me to be about a, maybe a 7080 proline. Now, I've seen this done with 7080 proline, many different options here. Now, using the chopper in one hand, this is pretty innovative. And then the other hand, pulling out that needle, and there's the suture. And so by placing this proline suture in a loop manner, what you're able to do is really secure that IOL haptic. So again, pulling the iris back with the chopper or the hook, and then the needle now goes in above the haptic, and you can confirm that looking there. And then what the surgeon can do is then thread in the other end of the proline suture. And you can see there's an opposite paracentesis made there at the limbus. There's the opposite end of the suture. And once that's threaded in there, it can be pulled out through the other side. Now, this patient has significant pseudophacodinesis. So the whole capsule bag is pretty loose. And so you're still getting the capsule bag and IOL complex hitting or rubbing up against the posterior surface of the iris. And that is causing your UGH syndrome, uveitis glaucoma hyphema syndrome. And so in order to resolve that, what you want to do is bring that lens and secure it away from the back surface of the iris back in its normal effective lens position. And so now, again, threading that suture through, you can pull it out the other side and then do a flange technique here. And so this is now one loop of proline that's going around the haptic. And this lens, you can do it at the haptic optic junction. And notice the second entry site with the needle is about a half millimeter above the first one. And so now you've got a good loop without any twisting. Hey, let me tell you about cataractcoach.com, our podcast. Number one podcast in all of ophthalmology. Most loved by everyone. A new podcast every Sunday. In fact, yesterday's podcast was Chris Tang, this surgeon who's doing this case. We talked about this kind of tough case, and here he's showing you. So we like to do that on time to time. If we can feature the podcast guest uh, surgeon uh, um, showing a video of a tough case the next day. So Sunday podcast, Monday the podcast guest has a surgery. So again, pulling this through, you can see there's that loop. Make sure it doesn't get caught in anything. And once that loop is pulled through, it's going to secure that haptic. Now you can do the other side as well and then get them evenly pulled and titrated and make sure the lens is in the position you want before finally um, cinching down those flanges and tighten it up. So there we go. Those are cut. Now, both sides have been done. I just fast forwarded the video here. So now you can pull on that, get the lens where you want it, and then get the flanges created nice and short here. And then you're going to allow this lens to be beautifully fixated in a permanent manner. Now, remember, after these flanges are created, you don't want them just sitting under the conjunctiva. You'd like to get them, if you can, um, buried within that little scroll pocket there, scroll tunnel. Now, you notice in this case, the surgeon is able to do it without even doing a pyridomy, without taking the conjunctiva down. If you have a case where there's significant chemosis for whatever reason, you may have to take the conjunctiva down for a better view. So again, titrating the tightness here, you don't want it to be too loose. So that's why pulling on it just to make sure you got it where you want it. And then a little bit of cautery here. There we go. Coming from that side, a little bit of cautery, create a flange. And then these two flanges can be tucked away. Now, there are other ways of doing this, too. You can use Gore-Tex suture. You can do any other kind of fixation you'd like here. But I think this is a nice, relatively simple way of doing it. And the patient had really good success with this. So now this is going to solve the uveitis part and the hyphema part. Now, what about the IOP issues? Now, this patient certainly already has underlying pseudoxfoliation as well as pseudoxfoliation glaucoma. And, you know, Dr. Tang is a glaucoma specialist. So perhaps it's a good idea to do another procedure while you're already here. And I think in a case like this, doing some sort of a MIGS procedure would probably be your best bet. So again, making sure those flanges are nicely buried away and tucked over. They're looking good. Now let's do the MIGS. There's the gonio mirror. And this looks, looks like a device to do a goniotomy um, or tereculoplasty even, or maybe a combination of both. And so getting that accomplished 
is going to help lower the intraocular pressure as well. And happy to say this patient had a really nice outcome. So again, if you see a patient who has pseudoexfoliation, has bad uh, pseudofecodinesis, has the UGH syndrome associated with that, you're going to want to do something to help that patient. So here at the end of the case, looks pretty darn good. Hey, remember, check out cataractcoach.com, the teaching website. So much great material. And of course, you got to check out the podcast. On, available on Amazon, Apple, Spotify, anywhere where you find your podcasts.